A new youth center at the Homewood Brushton YMCA is focused on hands on learning and experimenting with cutting edge technology. Today I'm joined by several people who helped make this project happen. We have Etha Cow with Neighborhood Allies and Lighthouse Senior Program Director Kay Bay joining us. Thanks for coming in. And you know, this center is already so beautiful, but it's really expanded to offer more opportunities to kids. Um, yeah, so the lighthouse, the lighthouse project has been working, has been has been around for about 15 years now. Yeah. Um, our focus has been visual arts and audio arts, and now with our new center, we're bringing in STEM coding, 3D printing, but all of this is in a way of supporting kids' mental health and both in building community. And we think that adding these new adding this new technology is going to give us an opportunity to allow kids to expand their horizons. And Etha, why was it so important for Neighborhood Allies to get involved in this project? What was the goal of the center? Sure, yeah, Heather. Um, well, so Neighborhood Allies is a nonprofit that focuses on economic opportunity and providing that to the community. Um, and so, as the director of the digital inclusion department. Um, it was really important to invest in Homewood um, and make sure that kids had STEAM and STEM learning opportunities to know that you know coding is fun. Um, they can create digital art. Uh, and these are all potential job opportunities and learning and education opportunities for the future. Um, and it's really honestly what the community deserves. So due to a very generous grant from Verizon, we were able to build this makerspace um, we were one out of four cities that were selected for this pilot project. Um, so the other three are Houston, Portland, and Cleveland, um, and they have already launched their centers. And uh, we actually have an adult space opening up at the CCAC at Home and Brush in, in August. That's wonderful. Yeah. I, you know, can you talk more? I, I'd like to hear from both of you about digital yeah. inclusion and what that really means, why that's so important. Um, I think with the advancing of our technology, it's going to be, it's very important. It's basically like having the ability to read and write. And it's a gateway to all the opportunities of the future. And those who, those who don't have that gateway are going to find themselves struggling to, to be competitive in our future markets. Right. Um, I think it's important that, ki that people in our community get, a, get exposure and the education so that they can properly use these tools to help benefit themselves and their community. Um, it's just, I mean, without it, then you're rapidly being left behind. Right. I would say digital inclusion often gets interchanged with the phrase digital equity. Right. And I feel like, you know, if you talk about the three important components of achieving digital equity and inclusion is the high speed internet access, the actual device, the computers, um, and then the skill sets, and honestly, the confidence. And I talk about the confidence a lot uh, because you know instructors like Kay inspire that with the young people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the majority of folks uh, just in our nation, in our world, have two out of those three. But I think achieving all three is very difficult. And I think we all saw that during the pandemic, right, uh, right. when you know just the average person was struggling to get their hands on a computer or, you know. Do virtual who, learning and all of that, right? Exactly, virtual learning, virtual work. If you talk about just communities that um, are reliant on just like SNAP, WIC, even making a doctor's appointment online, like everything is online now. Right. And that Absolutely. is a very important thing that we have to achieve. And Kate, mm -hmm. as, as one of the instructors, as the program director, tell us about the Lighthouse part of all of this Lighthouse project and how you help kids. Um, so the Lighthouse Project is designed to be an open and inclusive space and safe space for kids to grow and learn. Um, we do this primarily, like I said before, using visual and audio arts, doing projects where students learn animation, beat making, songwriting, poetry, uh, self-expression. We do a lot of it is about uh, teaching kids how to express themselves and giving them as many different tools and skills to express themselves as possible. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, I personally think it's very important that communication and con communication in the confidence to communicate will help grow you as an individual. And so we really pride ourselves on being uh, both a voice for our students and an ear for our students. So, because they tell us what they need. 
And so, so we are constantly adjusting and adapting our programming based on the actual needs and desires of our students. That's wonderful. Uh, so like, yeah, so um, one of our most recent projects called Walk a Mile in My Shoes, which has an album, we have an album releasing later on this year. I can't wait to hear uh, it. Which is a culmination of haikus, poetry, reflecting on their, their state in their community. And this mixed animation, beat making, haiku writing, and, um, and, descript and descriptive conversation to create this unified project, which released the album, and we're, we're releasing a, a bunch of haikus that the students wrote later on as well. Fantastic. We'll have to follow up with you. I can't wait to hear that. Thank you. Thanks for all the work that you guys are doing in the community, too. Thank you.